what's up guys? In this video we're going to be talking about my current favourite running shoes. We're going to be talking about my London Marathon training and Amsterdam Marathon training. And I'm going to try a negative split this long run. So let's get stuck in. So welcome to the weekly vlog. Been around here, I'm training for London and Amsterdam Marathon. I believe they're going to go ahead, so let's see. But this week, like I say, in the opening, I wanted to talk about my current running shoes because you guys are always asking me. So I'm going to pick my sort of top three while I'm running in at the moment. I'm going to talk a little bit about training this week. Uh, and like I said, also, I'm going to try and negative split this long run. I need to get a little bit of race pace in my legs. So let's see if we can get that done as well. All right guys, so training this week, I'd give myself a six and a half out of 10. Better than last week, still not brilliant. Um, struggled really motivational wise this week. But like I said, I think a lot of that one is to do with where I'm at in the plan uh, until I've had some stuff going on. Personally, so I had to deal with that this week. So I think there's an element of that in it, definitely. But anyway, six and a half is the improvement. I'll take that all day long. I managed to get out just the five times this week. I was meant to go out at six, but I had to sack one of the runs off because basically my mum and dad came over, which was lovely to see them. But yeah, so I sacked one run off and I ate cake instead, which was really nice. But yeah, so six and a half out of 10 is probably a fair score where I'm at this week. So after last week's ending about changing my plan around, I did it this week and I had a look at my existing plan. And like always at 40 runs, we keep it really simple. So all I've done basically is jump back two weeks. It was as simple as that. I mean, we hit big miles doing 17 two weeks ago, which was, you know, would have been fine if we was going for uh, the earlier race in September, but there was just no point now. So switching it round, because uh, basically like I said, gone back two weeks, which is why today I'm out here doing well, it's meant to be 30 miles, but I'll probably end up doing about 14. Uh, but I will, like I said, try and negative split this on the way back. So what do I mean when I say negative split? Well, that basically is running the second half faster than your first. A lot of marathon runners like the elite guys and that, they aim the negative split. Oh, you know, run the first half slower, second half faster, because that gets the best times, apparently. So... During my marathon training, uh, one of the things I will try and do is these sort of runs where I'll go out real easy, so my easy pace work within sort of zone two heart rate, and then I'll flip around and I'll sort of hit goal marathon pace on the way back. It's one way of mixing up your runs. Another way is to sort of do the last couple of miles at goal pace and stuff like that. But it's just a good way of sort of one, mixing up your runs, and two, trying to run that goal pace on your, on your tight legs. So I thought it'd be cool this week to talk about my current favorite shoes. How uh, you guys always asking me about that sort of stuff. So I thought it'd be cool this week uh, to go from, I'm really lucky on this channel, we get to review a lot of shoes. So I'm in a really privileged position, but I'm gonna give you the sort of, uh, sort of top three, top four of the ones. Whenever I go to the garage, you can't do me run the ones i'm always going for the ones i i can never leave alone those are the shoes i'm going to talk about today and why i think it might be worth having a look at for you right guys so my favorite shoes now just back from a 7k and i thought we would carry on doing this video down here um so i just thought there's some dog poo on the floor lovely um, but i thought we'd call uh, cool to do this video down here uh, just finish our apologies if it's a bit windy i'll try and uh, mute that out and the editing but I thought it'd be cool to do it here uh, I brought some of the shoes with me in the car before I got out and done my run um, I think what I'm trying to get over on this video with regards to my shoes first to you guys are asking but we all have our favorites now I'm really lucky that I get to test so many shoes and I have so many shoes in my rotation you know most people have like one maybe two pairs of shoes uh, to, to have in their in their rotation so I'm really lucky 
And a lot of the stuff that I base it on, just to give you a bit of feeling, is um, pretty much what I'm gonna be doing that run and how I'm feeling. Uh, obviously I have my favorites, uh, and that's why I brought these out, because these are some, sort of my favorites at the moment. Um, but yeah, it, a lot of it depends on what I'm planning to do. I think the first shoe we'll talk about is my sort of daily training shoe. Uh, my current favorites are um, these, which I'm wearing, uh, which is the Saucony, uh, they're a bit grassy, but the Saucony Rye 13, these are just awesome. Hopefully you saw the review uh, on Saturday, I think it came out yesterday, um, or maybe on Friday, I can't remember which uh, we put it out. But the Saucony uh, Rye 13, it's just a great, great shoe, and I wish that the Nike Pegasus shoe was as good as this. It's, it's an epic, epic shoe uh, for those daily trainers. They've, they've absolutely nailed it this year, Saucony. And the Rye 13, it's just, it's just smooth, it's comfortable, and even the laces, it sounds silly, but even the laces are soft. It just feels great, and, they, and they've nailed it, and it's true to size, nine and a half. It's just a shoe you put on, you go out, and you run. So well done, Saucony, on the Rye 13. So my sort of go-to daily train at the moment is the Saucony Rye 13. The other one is the Prism, um, the New Balance Prism. And if you've not seen it, check out the reviews of the Fuel Cell Prism. Now, this is a slightly um, supportive shoe. It's got a medial post here. So for me, that's perfect because, as you guys may have seen in the videos, I kind of, uh, kind of uh, pronate a little bit, um, and that's working out really well. Well, I'm really using that shoe is sort of on those faster pace. Uh, today would have been perfect, but I actually wore a sock because I'm just absolutely loving them. But that, that's the sort of run today. 7K, sort of picking up the pace quite nicely, you know, nice... Uh, um, sort of even pace run this thing just eats it up this is also good on those half marathon distances where you're trying to grab 13 miles it's just a great great daily training shoe the other shoe which is not here is the evo ride i've been doing a lot of miles and they're pretty much had it now um i've been spending a lot of time in these um this is the sketches uh, razor 3 hyper this is like 6.4 ounces it is so light and you can hardly get your hands on these sketches here in the uk but this is just this is just an awesome awesome shoe i love wearing this and I, and I find myself just putting this on even just to go to the shops this is an unbelievable shoe and i wish him in some respects to, but you know i've got so many shoes that i've got two pairs of these because i absolutely love these i, I i'm tempted to even put these on for easy pace runs which is not really what they're for but i just i just love spending time in these these are kind of um sort of taken over from my Evo rides. My Evo rides I was wearing on every single run pretty much because I just loved wearing them when I first got them. Um, but as they've got older, I've just found myself sticking these on. You know, like 5K, you know, we just want to get out and just knock a quick 5K out. <laughs> Smashing. The, well, this is going to be no surprise to you guys. My long runs. Yeah, you know it. Guide ride, second pair. If you're new to the channel, I love this shoe. I've championed this shoe. I love this shoe. The um, Saucony Endorphin um, Shift is a good shoe, but I just found it cumbersome in comparison to this. Now, this is my views, you know, everyone's different, but despite this being relatively heavy with them, not the most breathable up in the world, but with the guide sole technology, which sort of helps uh, with regards to um, making you a little bit more efficient when you're out there. I always find whenever I wear these on my long runs, I don't feel as tired and stuff like that. It's got great rocker on it. The outsole's fantastic, and you could pick these shoes up for under £100. So, for my long runs, especially now marathon training, I'm sticking these on every single time, which is a bit naughty, uh, but it's how you've got to have your favourites, right? And then, even though we don't have any races, but my current choice, apart from like obviously my Alpha Flies and the Pro and stuff like that, so put them to one side, but if I'm, if I'm going out there and I'm looking for a time on a run, um, I think it's hard at the moment, I'm just trying to find the best ways, because, because there's no races and events currently, and there won't be until the end of the year, it's hard to sort of really define what you want from a, from a, let's say, a racing shoe. But I think I put like the marathon shoes to one side, so if I was just rocking up and let's say I was going to a run for an event, I was looking to do a 10K or, or one of their autumn events, I would probably stick on the Speed, or I would stick on the meta racer and that's why i brought these along so these are my kind of <laughs> you're gonna love this everyday racing shoe so i'm not talking those sort of my a race where i would stick on the pro or stick uh, a socket endorphin pro i'm talking about or my alpha flies i'm talking about just you know every other event so i do a, you know when they are on a lot of events because i'm really lucky um and these are the two shoes that 
I would wear for both of those. I've not really done too much mileage in these deliberately. I'm trying to save them as best I can because when we do get racing towards the end of the year, this is when these are gonna come out. And that's why I'm trying to I say, trying to save them. But I do find myself cheekily sticking these on with just a little cheeky little 5K. But I don't like to wear them down the canal paths because the canal paths ruin them. Um, as this is a good example, uh, and this is a good example. Uh, these, again, um, are holding up pretty well, but I'm tending to stay more to the pavements than the canal paths in them because I don't like to get them dirty. So that's the current rotation. I would really recommend, if you're looking for a daily trainer, checking out these. Watch the review on the Saucony Ride 13. I think it's an awesome, awesome shoe. If you're looking for something a little bit more up-tempo with a little bit more support, maybe the Prism. Oh. Um, long runs, check that out. Also have a look at, the say, the Endorphin Shift. Or I'll tell you what is a great shoe that I've got. Um, actually, I've got it in the car because I've been uh, running in that as well up in up the backs so along there where I've been out there doing those sort of longer runs. Uh, is the Glycerine 18. So check that out from Brooks. They've just come out. And then we've got these two bad boys as well. So that's it. So they're my shoes, my current favourite shoes. As I said, I've got loads of shoes. I'm so, so lucky. Um, but these are my current favourites. Right. That's the first half of the run done. But more importantly, I hope that was useful for you with regards to my current sort of shoe favourites. <laughs> um, but the... Right, let's get it back. Right, so 123 beats per minute. So I was well in sort of zone one, zone two, which was good. Uh, my average pace was 6.09 per kilometre. So really, really super easy pace for me, uh, which shows in the um, zones I was working, in, which is what I wanted. So the goal now is to turn around and go straight back, but do it at marathon goal pace. Now, there is a lumpy bit which I'll back off out of and then I'll have a slight cool down, but I'm, I'm hoping for around sort of that four hour um, marathon goal pace is, is the plan on the way back. So that's sort of 540 per kilometer. If we can get around there, I'll be happy. Um, it's not my goal marathon pace exactly, but if I can aim for that on the way back with regards to the conditions and what I've got to run through, I'll be very, very happy. So let's see if we can do that. Stay tuned to the end of the video. Right, let's get this show on the road. <laughs> that was hard, but we did it. 5.33 per kilometer. Right, I'll catch you guys next week.